you're also Commissioner Nelson. Hello, you there? Sorry about that. Yes, we are, uh, Commissioner Nelson. You're all set. Give me just one second. I'm literally just finishing parking, so I'm almost done. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this meeting is taking place entirely by teleconference via Zoom. The public is accessing uh, is accessing the meeting via the Santa Ana YouTube channel or the city website. The commission commission members and I, along with city staff and recording secretary, are in uh, different locations. Please bear with us as the technology may disrupt the flow of the meeting. Um, good evening to everyone. Uh, I would like to call the, the February 24th, 2022 Parks Recreation Community Service Commission regular meeting to order at, uh, at 5.33. Will the recording secretary please call roll? Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gomez? Present. Commissioner Nelson? Present. Commissioner Torreblanca? Present. Commissioner Wu? Present. You are. Commissioner Ramirez? Commissioner Moet? You have a quorum, Commissioner Nelson. All right, thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the presentations. Um, I will turn it over to the executive director, uh, Ms. Rudolph. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Nelson. Uh, we are next uh, to do the Pledge of Allegiance and then we'll oh, do presentations. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. All right, let's- Not a, not a problem. Oh, sorry, the Pledge of Allegiance, yes. All right, I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, all right, now we're uh, next on the agenda is the presentations. I will turn it over to Executive Director Rudolph for this item. All right, thank you so much. Um, tonight, uh, we have a a uh, little recognition and celebration of Mr. Ron Ono, who has served our community for over 52 years, uh, and he will be retiring tomorrow. Uh, and so we just wanted to uh, uh, say some words about Ron and tell him uh, how much we appreciate him um, and for all the work that he's done in our park system. And I know this is this is uh, via Zoom, and uh, but. Uh, uh, he's going to be going to the council meeting on uh, March 1st and get a proclamation, and we're going to be having a little uh, um, recognition for him tomorrow here at work. Um, so Mr. Ron Ono, he started uh, with the city of Santa Ana in the Parks and Recreation Department um, in 1969. Uh, he started as a landscape technician. Then he went to uh, other positions, uh, a landscape architect a park and landscape planner, and a park and landscape design manager, and then ending his career as the assistant uh, uh, administrative services manager. Um, so really, no matter what his title was, uh, he spent you know, 52 years contributing uh, to the park and recreation and the trail systems. Um, you can't walk in a park without uh, thinking about Ron and uh, his design and his work and uh, everything that he has done uh, for our community. Um, he's overseen 34 acquisition, uh, acquisition of 34 parks. He has built and renovated 12 recreation centers uh, and uh, six class one bike trails. And he was very instrumental in obtaining over 60 million, 60 million in state and federal grant funding. Uh, for our park and recreation system. And that is absolutely 
phenomenal. Um, he was very, uh, he's a very hands-on person, uh, very uh, involved in volunteer projects, our tree planting projects, um, and uh, everything he does, he, he tries to solve a problem. He totally loves this community and um, is uh, just proud of it. And, and we're certainly proud of him and, and what he has done. Um, he has so many achievements uh, that he has uh, has done here with the city, um, and we we certainly um, uh, appreciate you know everything he has done. So, um, Ron, you have had a legendary career, and uh, we're going to celebrate you tomorrow. Uh, and uh, you know, like I say, every time we walk into a park, it's it's um, I call him the mayor of Santa Ana, but, uh, you know, he's, <laughs> he'll take that title, I think. But um, anyway, so if there's, if there's anything else uh, commissioners would like to uh, say about Ron, uh, you go for it. And, and maybe we'll have Ron speak after that. Thank you. I would like to say something. I would just like, thank Ron. I think it's been a couple of years and every time he would talk, he, you know, he's just so humble about everything he does. I think he doesn't really like I don't know if he doesn't know or he doesn't, it's just so impactful everything he's done for us and for our city and our community. And he does it from his heart. I really feel knowing Ron when he, he, he really does it because he cares. At the end of the day, 60 million is not an easy feat. And I remember going commissions and, and we got this, this funding and he wrote this grant and I'm like, wow, Ron is amazing. And I was really sad to hear he's leaving, but it's very, you know, he needs to rest. He worked really hard for many, many years. And I really wish him a really happy retirement and he will be missed. And his contributions are impressive, impactful. And I just, he's amazing and he's great. And I just, he's such a lovely person overall. I, I'm, I'm really going to miss him. Uh, this is Commissioner Wu. Uh, thank you. Also, I want to second that. Uh, Ron has been wonderful to work with, and this, the parks uh, look lovely, and I'm really thrilled, but I'm sorry to have him leave, but I know he needs some time off. So thank you, Ron, for doing a wonderful job for the parks of Santa Ana. And yeah, also, I'd add, Ron, uh, I only got to meet you on a couple of occasions in person. But um, every time I talked to anybody within the city or Parks and Recs, it was the Ron Ono. Before I ever met the legend, I heard all these great stories. And um, I will say you lived up to every one of them. So thank you for all your hard work. And uh, I hope whatever you uh, choose to endeavor going forward is uh, everything you wish. So best of luck. Okay, Ron, you want to um, say a few words? <laughs> yeah, thank you for all those kind words. I don't know if I deserve all those uh, kind words that we've all mentioned. I really appreciate it. Uh, as you indicated, I do love this community. I have tried my best uh, to make sure that uh, whatever we implement, uh, it's enjoyed uh, by the residents and children of this community. So. Uh, I'm I'm really happy that happy that uh, I had a hand in in doing that. Uh, I hate to leave. I lo I love staying here. I love designing. I love continuing. We we've got a lot of projects still on the board. Uh, we we're wrapping up our park master plan. We're uh, we're we're going to start uh, uh, construction pretty soon on the stadium synthetic turf and. We're out to bid with Santa Anita synthetic turf projects and expansion. And so, uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure I'm missing a lot of projects uh, that uh, that we're working on, and I hate to leave in the middle of those projects. But I think it the time is about right for the new generation to take over. And I really appreciate all your uh, kind words and and support uh, for me as I went through my whole career at the city of Santa Ana. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, Ron. Um, 
next on the agenda, unless Ms. Rudolph, do you have anything less else to, to, uh, to add? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, public comments. Uh, recording secretary, does anyone wish to speak? Commissioner Nelson, at this point in time, we do not have any public comments. Okay, thank you. Then uh, consent calendar items. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, consent calendar. Item one and two are minutes of special meeting of December 16th, 2021 and excused absences. Um, do, you, uh, do you have any, uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes uh, for no December 16th, 2021? Meeting and excused absences, any motions? I motion to, uh, to second. I second. You can, uh, we'll uh, roll call call. the roll. Yeah, I'll second. Yeah. Commissioner Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Nelson? Yes. Commissioner Torreblanca? Commissioner Wu? I second. And Commissioner Torreblanca? Yes. Thank you. Duly noted. All right, uh, that is the end of the consent calendar. Um, yes, sorry, I think I'm on the delay. Can you folks hear me? Yes. We can hear you, Commissioner Torreblanca. Um, okay, today we have one item under new business. Um, I will turn this over to uh, Executive Director Rudolph on the, for item three, uh, which is an update on the naming of the uh, right rate um, Myrtle Park site. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna um, turn this over to uh, Tim Pagano, our Recreation and Community Services Manager regarding the rate Myrtle uh, Park site. We did a, we had a naming contest and so he's gonna provide you an update. I think he may have a PowerPoint, so you can go ahead and share that, Tim. Good evening, commissioners. It's uh, nice to meet you. I think this is the first time that I've actually had an opportunity to be with you um, uh, since uh, I've joined the organization. So it's nice to meet everybody. And uh, it's my uh, pleasure to uh, bring this uh, item up for discussion. Um, like uh, Director Rudloff said, uh, we have a, uh, a presentation with regards to the naming of the Rate and Myrtle Park site. So just for some background, um, our groundbreaking ceremony over at Rayton Myrtle was held on January 12th, uh, 2022. Um, during that time, and as we were leading up to the groundbreaking, uh, staff solicited suggestions from the community to assist in the naming of the new park. Uh, during that process, over 90 suggestions were received that met the Santa Ana Municipal Code uh, criterion. Uh, the, the criteria that we utilize, and like I said, it was from the Santa Ana Municipal Code, um, identifies the location by references. So this is what we were looking at, and this is what we asked the community to consider while we were uh, accepting and reviewing their, their suggestions for the naming of Rayton Myrtle. So essentially, what we would uh, the categories that exist are... It, the distinct geographic, environmental, or developmental features in the immediate area, um, the history of the subject site, the, uh, I, the site or the naming of the site identifies a person or family having made an extraordinary donation of lands or, or land or funds, and also the recognition of a person or family who made a distinct significant uh, contribution to the city of Santa Ana, including past mayors, council members, board or commission members, officers, or employees of the city, but not anyone currently holding such a position. The names that we received and the names that we're recommending uh, based on the uh, Santa Ana Municipal Code uh, are the following. Uh, the Rate and Myrtle Community Park, 
El Refugio Park, uh, based on the historica, historic Yorba Hacienda that once stood there. David Ream Community Park. Uh, he was the city manager from 1986 to 2011. Sarah Shaw Community Park. William H. Spurgeon Park and or Lemus Park. And essentially what we're asking and recommending is that the uh, Parks Rec Community Service Commission um, to we would like to, for, to form a ad hoc committee and in uh, collaboration with the Youth Commission, select a name from the list that we just saw on the previous slide that can be forwarded in the park naming process. Um, that's all that I have uh, with regards to this presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions that the commissioners may have. I would like to know the reference to the Lemus Park. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to bring in our recording uh, uh, secretary, uh, Bill Sandoval. He was uh, directly associated with this project, and I think he can give us some background on uh, Lemus Park. Thank you, Manager Pagano. And uh, Commissioner Wu, a lot of the names that we did receive during the survey that was uh, done between December and January did provide us name. Lemus Park uh, was also a neighborhood, uh, an individual that lived in a neighborhood that did provide some volunteer work uh, quite a while back. Uh, we had to dig into that to see what it was because a lot of the times the names that we received, they didn't, they didn't really specify as to uh, why they were submitting that. But the individual that was submitted under that last name was a volunteer from years back that uh, did a lot of work with the uh, city. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is it too late to add uh... Ron Ono Community Park to the list? Well, I think you might need to make a donation first, is it all? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, the reason for the uh, engagement of the uh, Park and Rec Commission and also the Youth Commission is, um, you know, we want you to, to have both have ad hoc committees and decide upon what you want to present to the planning commission. So essentially, or, or we would present it to the planning commission, but we would like for you guys to work together, maybe have an, um, a, a Zoom meeting or two um, to talk about, uh, you know, the names. Um, uh, and maybe you don't want any of the names uh, or um, so we're just looking for a decision uh, and your input. We didn't feel that it was right for staff to be selecting this. It's, um, you, this is something that we would hope the commission can help us with. Um, so um, typically it goes to the planning commission and they can either approve it or not. Uh, and so then we would take it to the city council and let them know that this, the planning commission uh, deci decision on, on the naming um, and uh, eventually this, the city council will make the final decision on that. So, um, so I guess maybe we're just asking for people. There could be up to three people to be on the ad hoc committee. Um, it doesn't have to be three, but, but it can be up to, up to three. Uh, I would like to, this is Commissioner Wu. I would like to volunteer to be on the committee. I, Corey Nelson, would like to be on as well. So there will be youth commissioners as well as three youth commissioners and up to three uh, Parks and Rec. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, yes. Yeah. Commissioner yeah, Gomez, I would like to be included. Blanca, I'd like to oh. be on the committee. As well. we're, we're both fighting for it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Tarabanka could go. I've been at Ad Hocs before. Wonderful. Well, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I will be coordinating the uh, ad hoc meeting between the Parks Rec Community Services Commission uh, members and also the Youth Commission members. So we have a Youth Commission meeting next uh, Wednesday. And so we'll ask for some ad hoc committee members from them as well. And then shortly thereafter, I'll be reaching out uh, to coordinate schedules so that we can get that meeting on the books and have uh, the discussion about the naming of Rayton Myrtle. Um, I appreciate you uh, 
taking the time and uh, joining the ad hoc committee. Thank you very much. All right. Um, next on the agenda is uh, informational items. No action is needed from the commission on these items. However, uh, this is time for city staff to provide a brief summary of their reports and for commissioners to ask questions. Um, so let's start uh, with library staff report, uh, Brian Sternberg. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, uh, members of the commission. Um, I'm just gonna provide a really quick update on some of the fun and exciting things that are happening at the library. Um, first, we are currently um, pinning down a scope of work uh, for an RFP that will be coming out for what I'm calling our library in the park. That is gonna be kind of a full interactive library experience. We're gonna have um, you know a large scale 14 foot um, book and library materials vending kiosk out there. It'll be under a canopy. We'll have tables out there and you know activities and play areas for for children, um, things that they might that we might focus on or we're looking to focus on um, will be, let me just pull it up here, will be things like music and movement, we'll have, uh, we might have um, things about recycling, water wise landscaping, bicycle and street safety, and of course, you know, uh, things that kids can play on that are that are, have to do with fine and gross motor skills, and of course, language and literacy. So it's all going to be tied to learning. Um, and I think it's going to be a really great space uh, once we're done. It's, it's the first of, of this kind of project that I know of that really, you know, um, kind of conceptualizes what a public library would look like, but outdoors in a park. Um, so it's an exciting project that we're just kind of getting started on working on. This one, again, is uh, Revive Santa Ana funded, um, and it should be uh, super exciting uh, once it is completed. Um, next, we have a bunch of new career. Uh, online career resources on the library's website. These are free for um, everybody in the community. Just you need a library card, log in. Library card, of course, is free. You can log in and get set up. We have LinkedIn Learning. We have Coursera, which is kind of a professional certificate type of program. We have a, a resource called Get Set Up, which offers online classes specifically targeting um, 50 plus populations, excuse me for the announcement. Uh, we have something called North Star that does uh, basic computer skills for seniors. Um, Skillshare, uh, which is a e-resource that uh, covers topics like Photoshop, photography, filmmaking, everything like that. So all that info is right on our website. You can go check it out. It's right on the front page. You can dig into it. Just sign in with your library card and start taking advantage of that. It's great resources for um, job hunters or just anybody looking to learn, really. Um, and a lot of these were provided for free um, from this California State Library. So it's a uh, it's all that's also a great thing that we're partnering with them. We also have a really great language learning uh, program on our website now called Mango Languages. Excellent place to learn a, a new language for fun, or it could be for your career, or you're just you know interested in, in picking it up. So um, that's uh, check those out on our website. Um, and just uh, finally, New Hope Library will be getting some cannabis funded additional renovations. We did it about a year ago. We, we completed a project where we got some new furniture and did some outside landscaping and parking lot improvements. This will be a bigger project. Uh, like I said, cannabis funding to really go in there and move some walls around, create a, a really nice media lab for kids and teens. Um, so it should ultimately be a really great space as well. We're just getting going. We have an architect uh, I'm calling that the city uses that we'll be um, um, bringing on board for this particular project. Um, and finally, uh, last thing is on March 15th at 3 o'clock p.m., we have a, a ribbon cutting ceremony for our new Children's Play and Learn patio. All the information is also on the library's website, right on the front page. You'll see a big banner up there um, advertising it. Please, you're welcome to show up. We're going to have lots of great uh, activities out there. Um, we're also going to be featuring a lot of our Revive Santa Ana funded uh, STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So, so 
show, we'll have booths out there with activities for kids and families. Um, we'll have other types of entertainment, a DJ, a food truck. So it's going to be really a big celebration and really uh, uh, the beginning, I think, of uh, like Santa Ana Public Library 2.0. This is the beginning where we really start changing the focus on, you know, just a, a, a building that, you know, and a service that didn't do a whole lot in the past to, to a dynamic interactive multi-generational family um, uh, type of service with fun things and educational things that are happening all the time. So we look forward to it and this is just the beginning. So please show up if you are able to, three o'clock p.m. March 15th. Thank you so much, I'm here to take questions. No questions, thank you. Sorry, Brian, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Perfect. Are you guys still doing um, like in person with the kids, like activities and story time? And I know oh, you yeah. used to have like magic shows and stuff like that. Is that still going on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, oh, we okay. actually have a hybrid. If you go on now um, on our library programs here, you can uh, the, since we kind of reused this one from um, January, this is focusing on our January programs, but our February programs are all on our website as well. We also have um, the calendar of all the events on our website. It's printable PDF. You can go on and take a look at that, everything for February. But, you know, we have uh, Super Saturday story times that is still ongoing at the library. Uh, we have a tween takeover program for where the tweens are going to come in and play video games. That's an ongoing program. So absolutely. Lots of in-person awesome. stuff. And also take and make kind of things too. If, if you want to just take something home and, and do it, we have those types of programs. And we also have all virtual programs. So we're trying to get a balance. We're leading a little bit more heavily now towards in-person programming though. We're kind of transitioning back over now that the, you know, the Omicron surge right. is sort of winding Going, down here. Yeah. So that's what I was asking. Um, I know in April, usually you guys have El Dia de los Niños, which haven't had yeah. it happen because of the pandemic. Yes. Is that something yes. you guys are considering? Absolutely. It's it's going to happen. We're in the planning stages for it right now. Um, it is one of uh, the city's larger special events. Absolutely. That is going to be happening. Look for Great more news. information. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank Look you. for more information coming on that really soon. We're planning it right now. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. All right. <clears throat> um, okay. Now off to uh, parks and facilities report from legendary Ron Ono. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present the parks and facilities operational report. Uh, this report is a combination of our capital project, uh, portions of our capital projects, and, and projects that have been implemented by our uh, general maintenance staff or par and park staff. The first item is the uh, ball field sports lighting project. Both the Jerome and the Riverview ball field LED lighting projects are completed, except uh, we were waiting for the electrical panel. Electrical panel, the new electrical panels is scheduled for delivery at Jerome next week and at Riverview in, in two weeks. Once those panels go in, uh, we will re-energize the lighting. But in the meantime, the lights are being operated uh, using the old panels. So there'll be a slight uh, interruption of the games when the new panels uh, actually go in. Uh, the other project is the El Salvador basketball renovation project. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, it's an exciting project whereby we have incorporated uh, art into the court you'll see these uh, super graphics actually in the court itself. Uh, the, the painting has already been done. Unfortunately, the recent rain has slowed it down uh, for the contractor to restripe. But once the court dries up, uh, he will be able to restripe and we would complete uh, that project. Uh, like you say, if you haven't had a chance, go by and take a look at it. It's a very colorful, exciting, exciting project. The courts is being completely renovated and we have installed brand new LED lights for not only the basketball court, but we also installed LED lights for the handball court. So that area is going to be brightly lit up. And, and Ron, uh, we'll have we'll have a uh, grand reopening of the court. So we'll uh, we'll we'll make sure we invite everybody. OK, make sure you invite me. 
Absolutely. <laughs> you better put your uh, your gym shoes on. <laughs> uh, the other project is the Santa Anita Synthetic Turf Project and basketball and, and parking lot uh, ex expansion project. That project is uh, just recently been advertised for bids. Uh, we anticipate the uh, bids to be awarded in, in May. Uh, the Raid and Myrtle project, we just talked about the naming of that project. Uh, the contractor is uh, the contract has been awarded. Contractor is replacing the construction fence and it will start uh, doing the grading operation in March. Anticipate completion of that project uh, in about a year. Uh, the Santa Ana Zoo Giant River Outer Project. Uh, We've had a groundbreaking event on uh, January the 14th, and the contractor is working on the access route for the project, installing the construction fence. I think the an anticipated completion date is, for that project is spring of 2023. The uh, Centennial Dog Park project. I wish I was here to do this project because it's gonna be a fun project to do. Uh, the consultant, has already held uh, public input meetings uh, and has submitted two conceptual plans. We've asked him to submit a third one. So he's in the process of submitting a third conceptual plan for that project that will be reviewed by staff uh, and with recommendations on which one we should proceed with. Uh, the other item, uh, the tree planting project, as Lisa mentioned earlier, I just love to get my hands in a lot of these uh, community volunteer projects. The uh, Orange County Conservation Corps has got a grant to plant trees at Delhi, Lily King, Angel, and Rosita Parks. Uh, we're selecting the tree species and identifying the location to plant these trees. And once that's happened, uh, Orange County Conservation Corps will come in with their team to, uh, to actually plant the tree itself. The Santiago Park Volunteer Tree Planting Project, Stanbridge University. I'm sure you've heard of Stanbridge. They've done projects for us before at, at Santiago Park. Uh, they are thinking of restarting that volunteer program. They, we've already identified locations uh, for the tree plant and it's gonna be uh, east of Santiago Street uh, up to the Valencia. So it'll include planting of 30, 15 gallon oak trees in that area. Uh, and they're tentatively scheduling a planting program on March 12, 2022. The other projects that has been implemented by city staff is the ball field lighting project. We've already completed the black vinyl fencing as a series of parks, Jerome, Adams, Riverview, Delhi, Madison, Rosita, El Salvador Heritage, and Morrison Park. And we will continue to install those vinyl fencing on all the other ball field projects as they come about. The Thornton Fitness Court project is also completed. We just had a ribbon cutting event in January. Uh, and uh, we're there's another project that's not on the list, but we're planning to do a ribbon cutting event for the Rosita Fitness Court uh, tomorrow on Friday at 1 p.m. So if you're available, please come by and see that project. The Delhi mini pitch soccer court, uh, that project, uh, all the concrete work is completed, the fencing, the backstop, the advertising, and the color coding is done. This project also was held up due to the rain. So once that court dries up, contractor will complete the striping of that court and that should complete that process. Staff has already uh, installed uh, sodding around the edges and, and helped uh, re-landscape re the, the area that was damaged uh, during construction. Uh, so hopefully that will schedule a ribbon cutting of that uh, pretty soon. Uh, that concludes the end of my report. And this is gonna be my last report. So <laughs> I appreciate your, your attendance and I'm open for any questions. Ron, I'm so sad when you said it's going to be your last report. <laughs> yeah. I'm very sad. I have a random question. I don't know if that would if, if it, you'll be able to answer, but I know you do a lot with trees. 
I, there's a couple, actually a couple of few neighbors that have asked when they have trees, they're in the middle of the, of the house. It's still their properties, obviously, but there's a tree that's super, super big. Like it's leaning towards the house and he's scared that it's going to fall off. Do, does the city have any programs that help homeowners with the cutting of trees? No, we, we, we don't. Uh, we don't okay. go onto private property to cut trees or even remove trees. Okay, just wondering. It's on the sidewalk, but it's on like their property. So yeah. Yeah. not the city site. No. But thank you. I just wondering, just out of curiosity. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Ron, oh no, this is Ruby Wu. I'm sorry that you're leaving. You've been wonderful. Uh, but can you give me a date on the grand opening of the basketball court at El Salvador Park? Uh, and we, also the fitness uh, court. Has that it's been an opening on that? No, we haven't scheduled one yet. Uh, we're waiting for the project to actually be completed. Then uh, I'm sure uh, Lisa or, and or Tim are going to schedule a, a date when everything's completed uh, and we'll notify the board uh, when that happens. But a date, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Lisa and Tim, but I don't think a date has been identified at this time. It, it hasn't at this time, but we're targeting, targeting early April. So okay. I think um, either the second or the 9th of April is when we're, we're targeting it. And obviously it's, uh, um, you know, we're, we want to make sure that the court is delivered, completed. So we're just giving it a little time so that construction and inclement weather and all that type of stuff um, can pass us by before we solidify a date. But we're targeting either April 2nd or April 9th at this point. Thank you. I just wanted to organize it for the Neighborhood Association. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ron. Um, next would be the Santa Ana Zoo report, uh, Ethan Fisher. Good, e good evening, everyone. Um, I just have a few brief updates for the zoo. Um, we've been sending out some animals to different places and bringing some animals in. Um, a big transfer we had, we sent 250 millipedes, giant African millipedes. They're about five inches long. We sent them to uh, the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo in Indiana. Uh, we have some new piglets at the zoo that are just finishing quarantine. Uh, we're going to be putting our ocelot pair back together because we're trying to have kittens again. Uh, so a few different things going on with the animals. Uh, Education-wise, we our park pop-up program that we have is um, set up through throughout spring. So we're, the staff are going out on Wednesdays and Fridays to different parks um, in the afternoon and trying to cover the whole city. So that is a, there's some information with the schedule on the zoo social media, and then also on the city website. Uh, we have a couple little libraries. I think that one of the little libraries at the zoo is new since the last meeting we had. Um, very, very popular uh, way to distribute books to the community. Uh, and, and they are definitely well loved and used. Uh, operationally, we we did have the groundbreaking that Ron mentioned for for the new exhibit, Amazon's Edge, and the contractors are are working on that. They're starting demolition, and uh, that that's going to be a good long process over a year of construction. Uh, another project that's been going on for the, through the design phase for a little while has been the, the goat encounter area. It's just about ready to go out for bidding. Uh, a big project that we had applied for a Prop 68 grant for, uh, for the statewide park development program was the primate forest. Unfortunately, we found out in December that that wasn't funded. So we'll keep looking at that one. And another big milestone for the zoo that is in the report is our AZA application. We actually mailed our AZA application this week, and that starts um, the process to uh, get reaccredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. The, the next step with this would be to have a site visit. We'll have several different professionals from other zoos and aquariums that will come out for three days, look at everything, talk to everybody, um, generate a report, and then in August, we'll go before the National Committee uh, at an accreditation hearing, and then we'll we'll hear about our accreditation status. There's only um, just over 200 
zoos and aquariums in the U.S. that are accredited by AZA. So it's a really important thing that we want to secure for the zoo and for the community. And it just shows that we're operating the best we can in, in our industry and meeting our conservation goals and our education goals and providing the best welfare possible for the animals. So that's, that's a really important one that we're pretty proud of and we're excited that we're able to apply now. Um, what else? Um, we're also working on a, we're still working on the temporary seasonal butterfly exhibit uh, for spring and summer. And we'll have some more information about that, you know, hopefully in the near future. And that's coming along. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Ethan, Commissioner Gomez, it's not a question, but so much like I was so happy. We went on Sunday when it was a free uh, Sunday for the zoo and it was packed. You were There's brave. That was so... actually, I think that was the busiest day that the zoo has ever had. We had, we <laughs> yeah. had 3,015 people oh, wow. visit the zoo on Sunday. I was going to say, yeah, it, it, it seemed like <laughs> it was 3,000. <laughs> it was a lot of people. And I the entire know, weekend not... was busy, but Sunday was the busiest. Yeah, you guys have the educational uh, people, like shows that you used to have, which mm -hmm. I think is really great. And I saw the changes that um, you guys were having that you guys made. That looked really cool, too. Um, it scared me a little bit because I didn't see the eagle and it's been such a staple in the community or in the zoo that every time we go, we see the eagle. But it was just. Oh, moved. yeah, she she's still there. We actually moved yeah, her to a different spot. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Um, but I, I just want to commend your staff and yourself. It was super nice and helpful and friendly. And it, just, it was such a good experience. I took the nephews and they had so much fun. And I, we just loved everything. And then we were able to pet the goats, which I think I've talked about how I wanted it to be interactive because other groups have like pettings and feedings. And we didn't have any of that. So I was really excited that we got to pet some of the goats. Yeah, Thank you for yeah. that. So that. And that's the project that we're working on now so that in the future, you'll be able to go in with the goats and brush them. Thank you, Ethan. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, uh, Parks, uh, Recreation, Community Service Staff Report, uh, Tim Pagano. Good evening, Commissioners, again. Uh, I'm happy to provide a Parks, Recreation, Community Services report for the Recreation Division and the Community Services Division. Um, some exciting things just to uh, put on your calendar. Uh, like Ron mentioned, tomorrow at 1 p.m. at Rosita Park, we have a ribbon cutting ceremony for uh, our uh, fitness court there. Um, would love to see uh, all of you out there to uh, experience that. Um, another uh, ribbon cutting ceremony that will be a dual ribbon cutting ceremony. And again, Ron already mentioned this is the Del High mini pitch um, that will be taking place March 16th at 3.30 p.m. Um, and in addition to the mini pitch ribbon cutting, we will be doing a dual ribbon cutting for the Del High fitness court as well um, during that day. We expect a lot of uh, participants that day because Orange County Soccer Club will be out um, in support. They're going to be bringing some professional players. So we've invited the neighborhood associations and also um, the uh, youth groups that utilize that field as a kind of their home base. So we're expecting a lot of activity. It should be a really great event. Uh, in addition, last kind of save the date, April 16th, uh, the recreation uh, division is going to be hosting an Easter egg hunt at Centennial uh, Park. Uh, we're in the preparation for that now, and there should be a uh, marketing campaign that will be uh, hitting, uh, you know, at least flyers and all of our social media aspects relatively soon so that we can start notifying the public of that event on April 16th. Um, some other things that are not as exciting as those ribbon cuttings and the events that are taking place. Uh, on January 1st, we were able to adopt our athletic facility reservation policy that went into effect. Um, that's had a tremendous impact on how we work with our youth groups and our adult groups that utilize our field space. Um, one of the measurable outcomes to that is one, one of the things we asked um, for those groups to do is to come into compliance, which basically means give us the opportunity to review their documents as far as their bylaws, um, their articles of incorporation, uh, make sure that they're a 501c3 or a California state recognized uh, nonprofit. And at the beginning of this process, we had three organizations that were in compliance. Since that time, we're upwards of 20 uh, of those organizations that are now in compliance. So uh, definitely some positive uh, track work there. 
we are having our first um, youth sports coalition meeting in the middle of March. And that's when we're going to have uh, the uh, requests by our user groups to um, start permitting the fields between July and December. So we're doing it in a six month chunk. Um, as opposed to doing it a month by month, as we have been doing since we have adopted uh, this particular policy. Uh, in addition to that, we actually have the opportunity to meet with our adult user groups uh, next Tuesday. So a lot of dialogue, a lot of um, you know communication back and forth, education and informing, um, but so far so good. In addition to that, we adopted our event permit policy and that was approved by city council on uh, January 18th. Um, again, uh, kind of codifying how we want to work with our residents and our non-residents that want to utilize uh, park space, uh, utilize film permits in, in our uh, public areas, and uh, just a good way to kind of establish some policies for how we work with our residents and our guests in, in our city. Um, for the Recreation Community Services Division, uh, we are, our areas of focus over the next three months is special events. Um, preparing for summer programming, uh, senior programs, park activation, and the activation of the plaza, City Hall Plaza, um, as we're emerging from COVID and the, uh, you know, the ramifications of that, you know, one of the things that we've been discussing uh, pretty intentionally is how we deliver these services and programs in a safe, intentional, and deliberate way. Um, so, Perhaps in the next meeting, we'll have more of a, a detailed outline of what programs we're, we're um, suggesting that we move forward on. Uh, the other thing that we need to consider is our workforce, which was depleted because of COVID-19 and the shutdowns that existed. So we're going to be going into a very active recruiting mode, um, probably within the next couple of weeks or so. And so if you know anybody that's looking to uh, have a summer job uh, and work with our department, uh, we would appreciate if you could be our, our ambassadors and spread the word to whoever may be in alignment for those uh, particular positions. Um, lastly, uh, some things on the horizon. Um, park host. We are in a, a discussions with our first park host. We've selected the candidate. Um, they are, uh, we're sharing our agreement with them so that we can go through the legal process of having them sign up so that we can prepare to put them over at Thornton Park. So one of the uh, requests of Director Rudloff is that we put that person in there before the end of May. And so we're tracking to do just that. And that that is our goal and our objective. And lastly, because we are super jealous of our library and our zoo cousins, uh, we are actually in the process of purchasing a uh, sprinter van so that we can create a Santa Ana street team where recreation professionals can go out to neighborhoods and engage our community at our parks um, and really try to bring a different uh, um, you know, element to what it is we do as far as programming, not being center-based, but again, going into the neighborhoods and really engaging the community where they're at. And we're hoping that uh, we can maybe create a convoy with the zoo and the library in some instances and really overwhelm the neighborhoods at some point with programming and services and all that good stuff. So with that, I'll, I'll wrap it up and I'm here for any questions that you may have. Um, this is com com uh, Commissioner Wu. Um, I'm interested in event uh, policies that we okayed. Was that uh, also uh, like the Little League, was that the fees were raised at that time? That's correct. Um, one of the things we did in preparation for the athletic facility reservation uh, policy is we took a, a look at our, um, our miscellaneous fees that were associated with our fields. Um, Long story short, uh, we haven't raised our rates in over 20 years. And what that has done is that has put us in a real uh, unsustainable model for making sure that we're maintaining our fields um, based on labor, based on irrigation, based on utilities, um, and oh, just overall maintenance of our, our fields and our park spaces and everything. So we did a very extensive process of working with our senior management analyst of identifying how much park space we have, what the, uh, the overhead costs of those, and again, maintenance, labor, uh, material, um, utilities, 
and we were able to identify what the cost per hour would be for respective fields. So synthetic turf, natural field turf, baseball fields, softball fields, and we were able to identify what those per hour costs were to us. And our goal was to try to get to a point where we were having some level of cost recovery. In some instances, we wanted to achieve 100% cost recovery. In others, we realized that that wouldn't be um, manageable, at least in the initial um, uh, um the, the initial steps of the policy. So we were able to identify a good sp space based on previous uh, uh, rates and miscellaneous fees. So there was an increase that took place, but the increase went from essentially $2 for youth resident nonprofit uh, organizations to $5. Um, so it, it is a significant increase when you look at it from a percentage standpoint, but when it comes to a cost recovery standpoint, it's definitely something that was uh, needed for us to maintain uh, our fields in a way that will be sustainable for the future and to ensure that we're, we're able to do that moving forward. Oh, uh, well, I was approached by the little leagues and they're having trouble for the cost and also providing the services that were badly needed at El Salvador Park. Is there a way to help them out to, uh, for the cost of this? Because uh, uh, they had to cut their uh, program services uh, that they're doing within the park and the hardship that it is and also should have been uh, talked over with some of the little leagues and the programs uh, within these different uh, parks. So I would like some more some discussion at some other time about this, how we can help them. Is that possible? Uh, sure, we can have a discussion. If, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Director Rudloff. We did extensive outreach to all of these different youth leagues prior to the implementation of the policy and explained kind of the vision and the process in which we were uh, moving toward. Um, in addition, we're having continuing conversation with all of our, our youth groups. Uh, Pony's one of them. I haven't really heard from Little League, so I don't know if that's being held, you know, handled at the um, at our supervisor level with America Robledo. Um, but I'm sure we can certainly uh, create some space and time to talk with the organizers of Little League as well, if that if that is needed. Right. Yes, we I have. I do Sorry. have the little, the Santiago Little League is quite concerned about their programming and we would love to have a discussion on that and how we can help them out. I have been in contact with the city councilman in that area too, so we can have yeah. a later. Yeah, and I, I would also suggest that, um, Tim, we can reach out, staff can reach out to them. Uh, typically what's happening is... Um, past practices, people just go straight to the mayor or straight to the commission or straight to, you know, and, and they need to bring it back to us because this is a, a year of transition. Mm -hmm. And we sat in meetings with them and said, look, we are here to make it work because we appreciate everything everybody does. So um, uh, Tim, credit to him and his staff have been having enormous conversations, <laughs> hours of conversation, but it's needed. It's absolutely needed. So everybody understands and we can try to make this work. So yeah, absolutely have them feel free to reach out uh, to staff and, and uh, they've been setting up Zoom meetings or, or in-person meetings or whatever, whatever works. So uh, yeah, no problem. Well, yeah, they would like to have a meeting and if we could organize it, if you give me that a call, please. Uh, I would like that, thank you. we Will do. Yeah, I think that's gonna be you know, initially pretty tough to swallow, but obviously understood that it's um, it's a necessity to to keep the parks up to speed and everything. But um, when you're when you're when you're working with a budget within a uh, youth organization and you increase your your reservation costs by over you know almost two thirds, right? It's uh, going to be tough to swallow at first until they you know there you know you can implement some you know some increases in fees, but then then you're going to have lower participation so where's the benefit right so how do you how do you how do you uh navigate that so appreciate the continued discussions thank you guys yeah and and also i'd just like to say one more thing is that we have given residents a discount and we are charging premium rates to people who do not live in this community 
So uh, we did that on purpose and, um, you know, we will continue that way. So we want to make sure it's the cheapest uh, uh, that we can uh, provide to our residents and uh, to make it work. So just FYI on that. The same with our events policy. Okay. Thank you guys. Any more? That's it. All right. Um, next on the agenda are our commissioner comments. This is this is, uh, is a time for each commissioner to provide comments um, if you wish, uh, but it is not required. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Gomez, Ward 2. No comments at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Wu, Ward 5. Yes, I have a few comments. Yeah, I want to make sure we have the discussion on the, the reservation fees, if they give me a call on that. And also, there have been hands vand vandalism going on at El Salvador Park, and we need some help in having in the warehouse part of where the Little League uh, stores its uh, equipment has broken and has not been fixed as yet. Um, we'd like to know how we can re have it repaired. Uh, if po as soon as possible. And then also to look at the security around there because there's been a lot of vandalism going on, how we can secure what, uh, the buildings. And, and so uh, I would like to have uh, some discussion on that. If I could have a meeting on that, it would be, I would really be helpful for these improvements. Okay, no problem. And also just uh, so you know, there is a, uh, a new RFP out for security services and um, uh, the public works department is putting that out. And so, um, you know, we're asking for more security services and, uh, but we, we can explain that and uh, as we meet and we can also bring it up uh, at the next meeting too. No problem. Thank you very much for that help. All right, uh, Commissioner Terrablanca, Ward 6. You might be on a delay. Oh, are you there? Commissioner Terrablanca, are you, are you there? He's on a delay. I'll, yeah, I'll hello. Uh, sorry if uh, I, I have no closing comments. I, I'm a little on a delay. Uh, but so, Sorry, I kind of missed my, my turn in that, but I, I have no closing comments. Thank you. No worries. No worries. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, I, just a couple of comments on my side here. Um, one being that uh, I, I got a call from a community member uh, family that was looking to have a, a gathering in the park and they were having some issues with reservations as far as how they go about it. Um, and it, it was roughly around 30 to 40 people that they were looking to, to, to have there. Um, and uh, they, were, they were told they needed a full reservation and they needed to pay $210 uh, down uh, payment down and all these other things to be able to reserve park space. Um, so uh, at, at that point, she was frustrated. She called me and I, I said, well, let me, let me call and see, because I believe if it's under 40 people, you don't have to have a reservation. So um, I called and spoke with reservations and um, they knew the party that we were talking about, but they were not up to speed, uh, at least on the phone initially, about um, what we could do as far as um, individuals or, or, or parties or, or what you do is, you know, what the requirements are. Um, so I really think we need to do some more, uh, you know, kind of internal uh, training on how to, how to what, we, what our requirements are, but even more with the, with the community. I mean, I don't think they know how to use our parks 
correctly. And that's, you know, um, I, I didn't realize you couldn't have a charcoal barbecue, barbecue grills, right? That's one of the elements. Uh, I knew about no bounce houses and that kind of stuff. But so I just wanted to um, um, just bring that up that, you know, we, we, we got to got to help the community be uh, make it easier and they were trying to do the right thing by getting a reservation or whatever you know they knew they were having a, a large gathering but i just just everything anything we can do on that side to to make sure that we're we're fully up to speed to, to help assist uh, the community um um on that one um the other one is is I, I know we've done a lot with the ball fields and and, and the renovation of the of the new fencing and that kind of stuff and the lighting um, is there any plans on doing anything with like the Neil, uh, Manchander, um, uh, like tennis facility on first and flower? Um, cause the, the, the screen on that is heavily worn and also, um, uh, quite, um, vandalized as well as the sign and all the other stuff there. I mean, I, I, I have a, a freshman in high school, so I spent a lot of time going back and forth to right in that area so it's it's definitely become a, a you know like well, what's going on there so if there's any intention to do anything with any of the other facilities um such as that i mean the inside of the the court is fantastic it's it's got pickleball and and it's it's utilized quite heavily it's just not um just doesn't look very good from the from the outside so right right the um the the maintenance of those uh uh, courts are, uh, and the, and the sign and the, and the screening is the, um, responsibility of the school district. So we maintain angels park, uh, and utilize that, that school land and they utilize Machander tennis courts and the, the improvements at Machander are due to, um, our, our, um, water, uh, department. They just put some new improvements there and they put the pickleball courts in, but, um, uh, the, uh, school, um, uh, facilities would be the people who need to redo that, uh, uh, the screening and, and anything else that needs to happen inside the courts. All right. Understood. Yeah. That, that okay. whole area seems to be a, a interesting, like who does what, whether it's city or school. Yeah. Is, they, they had a very large tree that, that, that fell. Uh, <laughs> it was in the cur in the, in the, in the uh, walkway there in between the, the curb and the, uh, the path of uh, the sidewalk and, no one knew whose responsibility it was to remove it, but it had to, had to get removed. So yeah, got it. Got it. Okay. Well, appreciate the clarity on that. Thank you. Okay. And that's all I got. So um, with that, uh, this is the conclusion of the meeting. Uh, the next regular meeting will be take place on Thursday, March 24th, 2022. Um, and meeting is adjourned as of 634. You're 61 minutes in. Thank you all. Thank you.